a former player at A&T, was the associate head coach on the staff before moving up a chair and leading the Aggies. We are ready to go here in the Yum Center and underway, North Carolina A&T going right to left on your screen, wearing the road blacks with the gold chim. On the road, they have played in California and Texas over the last two weeks as the first shot attempt of the day is missed. Louisville going left to right on your screen today in the home whites. The same starting five as there's been the last three games. As we get a look at Olivia Cochran, one of the senior leaders of this squad. And Cards had to add six transfers to replenish the roster. And there's one of them, Kiki Jefferson, right off the bat. Yep, Kiki Jefferson, we talked about her in the open and she comes right off the bat and knocks, knocks down the open three. No changes to the starting lineup for A&T from last time out against UT Arlington. And right away, Jess, one thing that's clear, North Carolina A&T has struggled this year with turnovers. They rank 214th in the country in that, 17 plus a game. Louisville is one of the best in the country at forcing them. That's gonna be a big part of this chess match today. Yes, it will be. And you know, North Carolina A&T has to find a way to be able to take care of the basketball, get possessions and knock down open shots. We also know this is gonna be a game played at pace. As Demaya Tucker picks up her first foul of the game. Both of these teams just itching to get into the action. Louisville has played quite a bit over the last two weeks, but they haven't been at home. A&T trying to work off that turkey here from last week. <laughs> Inside, Denyla Harris, the sophomore, skips it off the window. And Louisville off to a strong start offensively. First look at Bracon and Dorsey in the backcourt. An offense that loves to drive and kick. Bracon, a really good three-point shooter. This is Dorsey. Bracon with the shot clock dwindling down, gets it to roll in. Yeah, excellent take by Bracon. We talked about she really likes to catch and shoot on that three-point line, but when she knows Louisville is going to pressure her and make her drive, and she just finishes. Here's Sydney Taylor, the UMass transfer inside to Cochran for two. An excellent pick and roll. The defense helps up. You just make that easy pass to Olivia Cochran, and then we got another turnover. You talked about turnovers in the beginning for NCA and T, and they have to be able to find a way to get their possessions. Beautiful pump fake from Sydney Taylor. She just came off hitting a three. Olivia Conkren rolls to the basket and gets the easy bucket. But that happens because Sid Taylor knocked down her first open three. So you have to play her off the line. Tucker turns the turnover into two. And you could see it from Jeff Walls' face. That's the kind of giveaway that he doesn't want to see. Cards into the front court for Louisville. Early action for Cochran, and that's paying off. Don't try to catch your breath as Bracone for three. Got it. And she is deadly from out there. Yes, she is. And Coach Walls joked after Ole Miss of this Louisville team, if you tell them they're a shooter, then they usually don't guard you. So he tried this game to make sure they knew Bracone, quote unquote, wasn't a shooter. But of course, 61% of her shot attempts are three point range. So Louisville is going to have to pick her up on defense. Trying to get going this season after getting off to a rough start, just 29% this year, way off her career average. Stretches opponents when she can make those shots as Harris converts again on the other end for Louisville. Yeah, and you see Louisville just keeps pushing the pace, keeps throwing it into their post players. Good defense there from Ricards. And two early substitutions coming for Louisville. Marissa Russell is one of them. And Jada Curry is the other for Louisville. Curry, the junior from California, a Cal transfer. Number 
So far, four assists on five made buckets for Louisville. As the cards face off against this sort of token pressure from A&T. Curry had been in the starting lineup. Jeff Walls liked the look of Ricard starting and Curry coming off the bench. And right away, Curry with the dime outside to the other sub, Russell. And that was an excellent take by Jada Curry. And she just saw her open shooter across court. Marissa Russell knocks it down. That's what she does. Beautiful pass. 37% three-point shooter last season, Russell. Offensive foul is called underneath. I mean, Jada Curry just with the skip cross the pass to knock down shooter Marissa Russell. And this is what Louisville's defense is about. You play team defense. First person gets beat, help defense comes over and takes the charge. Sydney Taylor on the help side. Defense there as Locke picked up her first, Paris Locke. And a kick ball underneath, called on Jordan Dorsey. And Jordan Dorsey, we talked about her in the beginning, but she is a defensive player. She loves to jump the passing lanes. She loves to try to make you turn over the ball because her defense creates her offense. Such a smart player, was a valedictorian in high school. And her fellow team leader, leader Malia Bracone, was the class president in high school. So you know you've got some good leadership as Cochran kicks it back out. Russell for three. A scrap underneath. It's going to be North Carolina A&T ball. Your referees today, by the way, John Capolino, Kayla Maxey, and Algalese Carr. As Bracone checks back in. Probing, nice little runner to the right there. Curry, no time to set the defense. It ends up back with Russell, it's still alive. Curry for three, got it! Jada Curry pushes the pace, defense has to stop her. Olivia Cochran just kicks it back out and she knocks down the open three. But Looks that's familiar, number 30 Curry hitting a three there. <laughs> that's, that's what she does. She is a three-point shooter. Corner three is long, and it falls to, well, it falls to Louisville, and we're going to go into the break. Louisville getting contributions across the lineup here. Up eight through the first segment of this one. Greatness. The volleyball squad advanced yet again to the Sweet 16 in the NCAA Volleyball Tournament. One of the best sporting events in the country, if you ask me. The cards have been to the national championship match. They have been one of the best teams in the country for years running now, and the crowd gave them a nice applause here. And the, one of the other top programs at the school, a women's hoops team, going at the same time as Curry gets tangled up there with Nia Willis. And that's gonna be Card's possession on a tie-up. Yeah, and good hustle by Jada Curry. That's one thing Marissa Russell turned the ball over. That's a live ball turnover. That is one that Jeff Walls does not want to see. He would rather, uh, almost another one right there. He would rather UofL throw the ball out of bounds and be able to set up their defense rather than just giving it to him because usually a live ball turnover leads to an open layup or a made three. You can see him there coaching up the angles for the teammates of the point guard as Russell wide open for three, got it. Marissa Russell now, that's her second three of the game. And you know, for her to get minutes, that is what she has to do. She has to hit open shots. Louisville already four of five from three and eight of 10 from the field. As hot of a start as you could get. Oh, 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 oh. 
just on below loop from three is no good, but Love gets the rebound. We did have them both come on here and a quick timeout from North Carolina A&T as Louisville has ballooned this lead out thanks to a 13-2 run. And Jess, let's talk about Marissa Russell. No, definitely. Like I said, she has to hit down that open three and she's now um, made two of them in this game. And then just being able to get her hands on defense, she's such a long and lengthy player. That, that's hustle play right there. And just being smart enough to pull it out, let her offense get set up. Great play, great plays from Marissa Russell. Louisville just powering through field goals here. Seven assists on nine field goals, four of six from three. And they've been able to rotate the bench a little bit as they got Aaliyah Love, the senior graduate transfer for, excuse me, the, the Georgia Tech transfer onto the floor along with Easton Belolu. Freshman from Istanbul, Turkey. Here's Dorsey in the forecourt. Kiana Curtis for three, missed it. Love with the rebound. Now Curry. Nice move from Curry in the kiss. And Louisville loves their transition offense, pushing the pace, pushing that tempo, getting it up the floor. And like you saw there, Curry had a wide open look. North Carolina A&T now pushing towards three minutes without a score. Four turnovers in the last four minutes. That's one way to help yourself, going to the free throw line. Yeah, just being able to lead Lee Love, looking up the floor. I guess it helped that one of North Carolina A&T's player did fall, but just being able to find the basket and just high off that glass shot. Parents across the country who have tried to get their kids to use the glass for years <laughs> rejoiced seeing that yes. in transition. And that's one thing, North Carolina a and loves driving to the basket and trying to get to the free throw line. They're a very good free throw team, so if they can find a way to get past some of the Louisville defenders and get some uh, Louisville in foul trouble, they might be able to get back in this game. Naya Willis, the Presbyterian transfer, getting on the board there for A&T. Istanbul Olu, no good. And there's Demaya Tucker, the team captain. Rebound into the break, almost set up a three in the corner there for Dorsey. Love, no good. And the rebound falls to Sanaya Clark. Clark, a sophomore nicknamed Baby Shaq by her Aggies teammates. See if they can try to get her involved here as they try to get it inside. And it's a tough entry pass to catch in the first place. Yeah, and one of Louisville's keys to the game today is defense, being able to keep somebody in front of you so the help defense doesn't have to come over because like we talked about, this North Carolina A&T team loves to drive to the basket and get to the free throw line. And so far, Louisville has done a good job of that. Alexia Mobley on for Louisville. As Jeff Walls rotating through his bench, a good opportunity to do so with his team leading. Russell's three is no good. Great hustle there from Love to keep it alive. And now Louisville has numbers as Mobley gets the conversion. Nice close down from Mobley and great hustle by Lee Love, but that's one of those plays that it is going towards North Carolina A&T's basket. So it's like, do you try to tip that back? And I guess she knew Jada Curry was there, but that's one of those in-between plays as a coach. You're like, eh, you like the hustle, but... <laughs> the no, 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 yes, yes. moment. <laughs> exactly. Louisville now leads 12-2 in points off turnovers. A&T running out of time on a shot clock, and Russell, great defense at the end to prevent the last second shot. 
Yeah, no excellent defense by U of L, and they're really making it hard for NCA and T to get anything going right now. The Aggies, a 44.4% turnover percentage through this first quarter, not ideal. Mobley, now Love, stops and pops short. And stays with the cards. It's a busy weekend for card sports. We mentioned the volleyball squad, of course, the football team in the ACC championship game last night. And the men's basketball team kicking off ACC play against Virginia Tech this weekend. Curry for three, got it. Jada, the shot clock was dwindling. Jada Curry, a knockdown three-point shooter, but if you saw that, Marissa Russell drove, got two feet in the paint, the defense collapsed on her, and beautiful kick out for the assist. Jada Curry came into this game seven of 24, disappointing start for her from three-point range. And it's two for two to start it as Bracone is carrying her team right now with nine of the 13 points for a &T. Louisville in control through the first quarter. Up 16 on the Sunday matinee action here at the Young Center. Back out for second quarter action. Nice. Finally an opportunity underneath for Clark who spins and draws the and one. A good start to this second quarter for the Aggies. All Colonial Athletic Association freshman team last year. As we stand below loop, was whistled for the foul. And that's what I'm expecting to see this half of NCA and T really trying to get it inside the paint and score some paint points. Like we talked about earlier, they like to drive the ball. Like they like to get it to the pros players, and they've kind of settled for some outside shots that first quarter. So I'd like to see them get it inside a little bit more, just like they did to Clark. And Stan Belolo is going to go to the free throw line. Turkish international played in the U18 and U20 level for the Turks played in the Euro League as well and won it with Fenerbahce. And we have gotten word here. I want to confirm this in case your world has been rocked that Alabama got into the college football playoff and an undefeated conference champion in Florida State was left out because they had one bad game. So interesting choice by the committee, but Nevertheless, we persist as an offensive foul is called underneath. And it'll be the second on Jordan Dorsey. Something to track here as she immediately comes out. And Nia Willis checks in. And that's a big one for a and to not have Dorsey on the floor, averaging 12 points, five rebounds, and four assists for this team. Last year was a 42% three-point shooter. As the Aggies show a little zone here. Love, down to eight on the shot clock. Russell for three. And the offensive board lands with Istan Belolu. And that, the first part of that possession, you saw Louisville just basically passing the ball around the three-point line. And then you see, excuse me, I think it was Marissa Russell, or no, I'm sorry, Lily Love drive the ball to the paint and then kick out. She missed the three, but you have to get two feet in the paint for a good kick out to give an opportunity to get an open shot. Tie up underneath, but the ball will stay with Louisville. 16 on the shot clock. Good to be calling college basketball where you have a big bracket. You got a lot of opportunities for teams to play for a championship. You don't decide championships 
in September and October. You decide them on the actual playing uh, court. It's a hot take on my part. Definitely. <laughs> I agree. I like, I like that as well. I'd rather argue about teams that are questionable to even get into the field than <laughs> one seed. Every yes. sport's different, though. <laughs> Push back in the other direction, Louisville. Russell thought about pulling up and shooting there. He's down below Luke, working in the post is short. Clark with the rebound. This is Bracone. She's been excellent so far for the Aggies. And Clark is called for the travel. And Yvonne Scheich will check in. That's 11 turnovers now, by the way, for North Carolina a and Sydney Taylor also back in. Yeah, 11 turnovers playing uh, the top 22 team in the country is not something that, you know, you're going to succeed with. You got to be able to take care of that basketball. And it's a painful giveaway because on the ensuing possession, Louisville hits another three and the lead is the biggest of the day at 21. And there's another giveaway. Nine different Louisville players have scored so far as Love gets all the way to the 10. She's got four and Louisville has really started to pull this lead out. Bracone guarded out front. Willis, nice pass inside to Tucker for two. That was an excellent pass in NT. &T. They needed something, so that was a good basket for them to get to get themselves going. The funny thing is, they're seven of thirteen from the field, but those twelve turnovers have really killed them. As Love follows her own miss and got the putback. A frustration moment for Terrell Robinson and a timeout for the Aggies as Louisville does one of the things it does best, second chance points. It is 38, excuse me, 40 to 17 here in Louisville midway through the second quarter. Born in the wild. Aggies have given some big names, a hard time on the road, but this one has slipped away pretty quickly. It's hard to beat anybody when they're playing as well as Louisville is. 24 points from its bench. So far, Louisville, the cards have outscored, their, their bench players have outscored their starters. They've been suffocating defensively as Tucker tries a tough shot. Good effort there from the a and T to try to keep it alive, but eventually it was pulled away by Russell. Taylor was looking for Von Scheich, just a bit too high. Three from the left side, lock no good. One for six now, a and from three. He's gotten a lot of their points in the lane and around the basket. And Lowell right now moving the ball so well. Well, three second call in the lane, but still on that possession, the ball moved out of each other's hands so quickly and Henny Van Schaik was wide open for that shot if of course the three second call wouldn't have been called or she would have gotten out of the lane, but. Cochran coming back in for Mobley. Cone guarded out front by Taylor. This is Willis. Ten on the shot clock as Willis gets into the lane. And the foul was called. That's the first foul on Russell. I'm sorry, Jess. No, you're fine. I will say this Aggies team is taking the ball to the basket hard and trying to get a foul drawn, something going. 
If she can knock down these two free throws, 21 point game, you just slowly have to find a way to get a stop on the defensive end and get some offensive points on the board. Willis, a graduate student from San Jose, California. Taylor. And Scheich traveled out front. And Scheich, the transfer from Bakersfield. As Bracone will bring it up here for North Carolina A&T. Three straight turnovers now for Louisville as they just keep A&T around. Cone. Nice pass underneath. Yeah, it was swatted down. I don't know who they're going to give that credited to there between Love and Cochran. Yeah, excellent take by Bracone. The help defense doesn't get there in time, and that's just a nice play. Nice pass from Willis, but Von Scheich erased it. Now a break opportunity for Louisville. Taylor, Von Scheich, couldn't clean it up, but she keeps it alive. Cochran. Nice pass from Taylor and a bucket for Cochran. A nice ball movement. I mean, that was six, seven, eight passes before the shot, and that is what Jeff Walls wants to see. One of their keys to the game, they did not want to just one pass and shoot the ball. They're not very good percentage-wise when they do that. But when they get the ball reversed, they're pretty dang good. Bracone out front, six on the shot clock. Nice block by Van Schaik, but look at the outlet pass from Olivia Cochran up the floor. One pass, two pass, three pass. Olivia Cochran just goes up with her left hand. Just excellent basketball right there. 12 assists on 17 made field goals. Louisville's got 20 points off turnovers. I mean, they are just stuffing the stat sheet here. Jefferson back on the floor for the cards as there's a foul underneath on Clark. That's her first. Cochran, the jumper is good. She's perfect so far from the field. Olivia Cochran, a four-year UofL player, leader of this team. She can really do it all. She's excellent around the basket. She can step out and hit that 15-foot jump shot. Still working on her three-point shot, though, but <laughs> she's taken a few in, the, in this season. Plays with so much energy, loves to talk. It's fun to watch Olivia Cochran play basketball. It definitely is, and the growth she has had over the past four years has been incredible. Came in in a vaunted recruiting class and has stuck around now through her senior year from Columbus, Georgia. Bracone out front. Clark for three. Felt a little rushed there. As Curry checks back in for Love and Louisville switches to a smaller lineup. Number 10, Demaya Tucker. And number 21, Jordan Dorsey. They replace Willis and Perko. It's four starters and Von Scheich for the Cardinals right now. Yeah. 
Ron Shake steps into one, got it. A nice read by Jada Curry there. They ice the ball screen, so Van Schaik just pops out a little bit farther. Jada Curry makes the nice pass, and she knocks it down. Well, now it's up to Nina Ricards when she gets back on the floor to get a point because every other player who has played for Louisville has scored. They've had five different players make threes. Here comes Curry. Cochran with a nice skip pass. Taylor couldn't get it to fall. Jefferson, as easy as a layup as you're gonna get. Down to two minutes here in this second quarter. Louisville firmly in control. It's an 18 to three run now that has really ballooned this lead out. Von Scheich has been active on both ends. Two steals and a block now for the junior from the Netherlands. Cochran got it again. Five of five today. Money from that 15 foot range. But as a post player, if you're able to be so excellent around the basket, but then to be able to step out and knock down the 15 foot shot, that means the other team's five player is also going to have to come out and guard you, which leads other guards to be able to cut to the basket if that 15 foot shot isn't open. It just opens up the floor so much more. It's been tough sledding for North Carolina a and offensively. As Malia Bracone has carried this team, she has split the scoring with her teammates. Nine for her. As the second quarter has not been kind to a and yeah, and Bracone, we talked about her earlier, and she's one of those players looking to score. 61% of her shots come from the three-point line, and Louisville has done a really good job of not letting her get anything easy other than the first three she made tonight. Oh, that's a hard fall there. It was Tucker who got tangled up with Taylor, I believe. Couldn't tell from here, but there was immediate concern that she might have hit her head. It's the second foul on Tucker, and they both fell hard on that. It looks more like a shoulder than anything else for Taylor. Decorated A-10 player out of UMass. Hit 104 threes last year and was the MVP of the Global Jam that uh, Louisville won over the summer, playing some really good international competition. A rare free throw miss for this Louisville squad as they have the 24th best free throw shooting team in all of Division I. Racone. And Clark had her second chance blocked away. And a foul called underneath on Jefferson. Final 15 seconds of this first half. Can a and get something that'll give them some positivity going into the half? Yes, they can. Little uh, and one there as Cochran couldn't yeah. quite decide what to do there underneath the basket. Way to attack the basket. And that's one of those things where you're Cochran, you want to take that charge, but it's a 52 to 18 game. It probably went through her mind. I mean, do I really take the chance of landing wrong? 
I'm just speculating on what, as being a former player, might think might go through your head, but definitely something where she was there ready to take the charge and then just stepped out of the way. Right back in the other direction after A&T broke a six plus minute drought for scoring. Louisville hustles down and gets one. It's 50 footer. Curry has played well today. She's out on the floor with eight points and five assists for the cards. Right off the bat, a turnover for A&T. And transition almost, but it falls to Bracone. Good to see Dorsey back on the floor for A&T, but a turnover for the Aggies. On the floor for them, Tucker, Davis, Dorsey, Bracone, and Clark as Terrell Robinson in his long tenure here at North Carolina A&T has had a very good program and expects them to be competitive when they hit the road in games like this. Cochran's jumper no good. We saw the coaching staff for A&T outside the locker room chatting at halftime and trying to just talk through some things to figure out how they can get their squad going. As a foul there on Clark is going to be her second of the day, a charge drawn from the Louisville Cardinals. Yeah, Louisville doing a really nice job of moving their feet and getting in position to be able to take that charge. Good slip pass by Clark, but Nyla Harris just slides over, gets her feet set. And that's a couple charges on the day for the Louisville Cards team. Whoever is charting the hustle stats on the uh, Louisville bench will be thrilled with the number of hustle plays that the Cards have had between loose balls and drawn charges. Taylor missed it. Here's Olivia Cochran. She was perfect in the first half, but has missed her first two shots here in the second. Saved by Harris. Three ball, Taylor, no good. Cold start for both teams to start this second half. And a jump ball call that time. That was an odd one. It got blocked, <laughs> it fell back to Taylor. Yeah, nice hustle by Bracone. Let's see this, Kiki Jefferson with the pass up, block. I don't know about the jump ball yeah. caller. I think that's just out on Taylor, but. Yeah, it was, it was very quick. It was a quick jump ball <laughs> <laughs> as she rolled out of bounds. It's Kiki Jefferson inside and a foul called underneath on A&T. The foul on the Aggies, number 20, Talia Davis. Talia Davis gets her first personal foul of the day. Nice skip pass from Cochran. Curry steps into a jumper. Short. Mobile 0 for its first seven. To start the second half, Cochran makes 0 for 8. Meanwhile, on the other end, four turnovers and no shot attempts so far for A&T. Yeah, this is definitely not the start to the third quarter that either team wanted, but good take by Clark. Way to get the and one. Let's see if she can knock down the free throw. Good finish through contact from the all freshman team selection last year. Now a sophomore, 6'4", from Fort Myers, Florida. Beautiful part of the state. Free throw is no good. And this is where this global team needs to have some maturity. You're up a good amount in the first half. Coming out the third quarter, you have to continue to play like it's 0-0. Zero, zero. And that's something, they're, they're 0 from 8 from their first shot. They're not getting as much ball movement as they have, as they have been. There's the first one, and of course it comes off of a turnover. They've got 28 points off turnovers today. 
as North Carolina A&T is up to 20 giveaways in this game. Trying to get Clark into the post there, working against Cochran. And Cochran swats that shot away. Yeah, Clark's down there battling, but Olivia Cochran just holds her ground. They're both two strong play, strong post players just trying to back her down, and Olivia Cochran <laughs> said some words after that uh, block. When we said she's chatty on the floor, that does <laughs> yes. not preclude her from the trash talk, and I don't blame her. Nice block. And then the steal from Cochran. Leading ahead, the lay is good for Jefferson. Nice pass up by Olivia Cochran. That's the other thing. We talk about all these things she can do on the offensive end, uh, scoring underneath the basket, stepping out to hit the 15-foot shot, but she's got handles also. Well, I know that was something through the course of her career that Jeff Walls and his staff was working on quite a bit, was getting her to the high level of shape she could be in, that she could run the floor, she could run the break. It's been a big part of it, and she has really grown into this role. Yeah, she is so versatile, and to be able to see right there, she drives in, defense steps up. She she has the IQ of a really great basketball player to be able to make that pass. She's playing like someone who knows she's seven points away from a career <laughs> 1,000 points. And she has been everywhere today. Um, yeah, nice pass right there. Supposedly a technical a... coming here. At least it's going to be reviewed. And then followed by a technical foul on number zero, Layla Acox. Acox was called for the foul originally and then the technical. So. It doesn't even look like they're going to review it. They're just going to go straight to the free throw as will be Nyla Harris who takes him. We talk about Olivia Cochran. Ten points today, two rebounds. The assist now, a block, a steal in 15 minutes. She has done just about everything that she can do in this game. Yeah, she's so effective when she's on the floor. Such a versatile post player. Like I said, the leader of this team, four-year player. She is what UofL basketball is all about. Being able to stick it out four years. Seems like she's having fun this year with the team she has around her as well, which is an important definitely. part. They're not only finding her, but they're spacing the floor in ways that have helped her no, definitely. operate. You, you can just see her confidence in trying to help the new players out. And you can tell she wants not just this game, but to go far, ACC tournament wins, ACC championship, NCAA. She wants to go out on top. Russell for three, missed it. Good hustle underneath. Haycox came up with it. It'll be their ball off of the tie-up. Dorsey has been quiet today, mostly because of foul trouble. She picked up two early ones. It's unlike her to not have an impact on this game, averaging 12 points, five rebounds, four assists this season. Really good three-point shooter. There she is on the drive, and she draws the foul. And that's what Dorsey loves to do, trying to attack the basket, get into the lane, draw on the foul to go to the free throw line. Yeah, like you said, it. it's a shame those two fouls early on because she is one of those impact players. been a consistent scorer for the Aggies and was an excellent high school player in Georgia. Highly decorated player in the Peach State. 
She knocks down the free throws for her first two points of this afternoon. Harris steps through and flips it in. And look at that footwork, footwork by Nyla Harris. Just excellent court awareness to know to go to her left. Seven points for Harris, who has grown into that starting role after being a key bench player last year for Louisville as a freshman. Big collision there. We'll talk about Nyla Harris for a second, because Nyla Harris came from Orlando, came into a loaded Louisville roster last year. And as the roster had high turnover, she's one of the key returners and has shown she can be a, a top player for them. But we'll talk more about her in a break here. We're going to go to break. Louisville in getting into the action here for Louisville today. Nice move just before the break. I mean, excellent footwork. To know that nobody's on that right side shoulder and to step through those two players. We talked about it last year. She had a huge impact as a freshman, and now Jeff Walls continues to push her to grow her game even more and has had a great year so far. We've seen her in a few games in some foul trouble, but just overall well-rounded player. You could see her being the next star of this team as the Cochrans of the world move on as one of those program players who sticks around and ends up averaging double figures as Louisville back in possession here and has been killer on the offensive glass. Three ball missed there from Easton Belogu. Yeah, and it looks like this Louisville team is trying to get Aloff some, uh, a, a three-point shot. It looks like they're trying to get it to her a little extra, telling her to knock it down. So I have a feeling she might knock one down here in the next quarter and a half. Bracone, three of four in the first four minutes of this game, just one for two since. Louisville is focused in on her, but a nice pass there to the flash to the free throw line for Locke, her first points of the game. Stambololu, a nice pass underneath to Harris. Nice pass by Stambololu. That's one thing, her court vision, we talked about it a few games ago, being able to see the floor, having that Turkish background, international style play. She's one that throughout the season, I think we're gonna see a little bit more of. That's a hard hit underneath there for Nia Willis. That's the first take. foul of the day on Harris. Just going up strong with that ball, get into the free throw line. Trying to put some points on the board. Now a &T coming into this year off of its first year in the CAA, a step up in league, and they were 12 and six and in contention for a league regular season title last year. Just one game away from it, and you can see why. They've got a lot of talent. They make their free throws, which is Good for points and opportunities with the clock stop. Well-coached team, these Aggies. Yeah, I mean, we have to give credit to Louisville's defense. They have made it hard for this NC a &T team. Coming in, they had four players averaging double figures. So Louisville, it's, it's not like this was just a walk in the park. They've really had to put some pressure on this Aggies team. Offensive rebound, the Stambalolu just missed it, and another opportunity for the Cardinals. A collision underneath, bodies flying. And it ends up out with Kiki Jefferson. Catch your breath for a second. You just saw that graphic with, well, with the turnover right there, know. that's not Thank good. But this Louisville team has 15 offensive rebounds, and offensive rebounds is all about hustle plays and keeping the ball alive, and so that's another positive for today's game. The Cards have more offensive rebounds at 16 now than North Carolina A&T has total for the game. 
And that has obviously been a separator in terms of stats. Louisville 18 second chance points as a timeout called out front there for North Carolina A&T. We'll take a break here. Louisville comfortably in front here midway through this third quarter. Comes back out onto the floor at all today, but she has been very effective. Ten points, two rebounds, an assist, a block, and a steal. Now seven points away from 1,000 career points. Four around the basket, step out, hit that 15-foot jump shot. Can guard, not even on the offensive end, but on the defensive end, can guard one through five. We haven't seen it much this game, but in the past few games, she's been guarding the point guard and can just really do it all. Here comes Jefferson running the break. And called for the travel there. It's Cochran on the bench. Quite a few uh, accolades to start the season. It was also preseason all ACC. Coming off a tough game too against Ole Miss. Obviously team still won, uh, but I'm sure she was feeling like today she wanted to snap <laughs> back to it. Yeah, this is a Louisville team who has played this will be their fifth game in the last 10, ga 10 days. And that is, as a player, yes, you're wanting to play the games. That's tough on your body, um, especially. But this, jo Jeff Walls talks about the tournament they played in last weekend, then going to Ole Miss with a two-day turnaround, and then three-day turnaround from today's game. This prepares them for what the ACC tournament will be down the road. And then, of course, the NCAA tournament. So it's a good test for this Louisville Cardinals team. Uh, unwelcome sight for Louisville fans as Kiki Jefferson has helped off there. She's gonna stay on the she's gonna stay on the bench though, so hopefully that's a sign that maybe she's okay. Down into the final couple minutes here of this third quarter. Louisville very much on its way now to maintaining its unbeaten record when winning at halftime. 5-0 and oh this year when winning at the half. You see there Louisville at that 11 mark with turnovers and that's something that if you want to be an elite team you have to keep the you're going to turn the ball over basketball's a game of runs turnovers everything in between but you, you really want to try to keep it under 12 so going into the fourth quarter with 11 turnovers against a team who really defensively defensively has not put the pressure on you is something that I think Louisville's gonna look at and hopefully they can only keep one turnover in the next 11 minutes, but the percentage there isn't very good. Jeff Walls with the uh, excited thank you from the sideline there on that last pass. <laughs> As Love gets the bucket. She's four of seven today, 8.6 boards. Nice performance from her. It's been spread out for Louisville today. As we mentioned, all but one of the players who have played for the Cards today have scored. That's 10 players for counting as Curry is down here. And if you're Louisville now, it's okay, you're up 37 points. You've already got Jefferson on the sideline. You don't want Curry, you don't want your key players to take knocks here as the December schedule gets really, really difficult. Some big upcoming games. You wanna maintain your roster here. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's one of those things, you know, injuries are gonna happen, but it is tough to see when it's a 37 point game. We are told that there is a possible upgrade here
you. Um, but with After Clark you, stepping over, well, we'll see the action. Unnecessary. So it's going to be upgraded to an intentional foul. Two shots for Louisville and the ball. So the contact there was deemed to be unnecessary. If you heard the announcement over the loudspeaker and upgraded to a technical foul. So Louisville will get two shots in the ball. A welcome sight for Louisville fans is that Kiki Jefferson is back out. That's after she, news. yeah, limped off a little bit. But I do think though, if it was Bracone, the player guarding her, bumping her a little bit, I think that would have been a little bit different where Clark stepped over out of her lane, out of her player that she was guarding to make that contact. I think that's where it was probably in between to upgrade it to a person or to a foul. Kiki Jefferson makes the second free throw. She's one of only two players. Louisville with double digit points as Clark stays on the bench there. Louisville really spreading out the scoring, shooting 50% today. And Jess, I, I, I'm always curious in a game like this for both teams, is it just teaching at this point and you're picking out little scenarios and moments to talk through? Yeah, I mean, if you're Louisville, you're trying to run through your offense, talk on defense, do the little things right, not rush to get the first shot that you that's open. Um, get some other players who might not necessarily um, score all the time, try to get them worked into the offense some. And then if you're NCANT, you're just trying to basically get through this game Still trying to do the little things right, but you want to be able to look at film and pick and choose what you did right, what went wrong, and try to learn for, from it for the next game. Travel was called there. That's frustration point for Jeff Walls. Trying to coach his way through this one. Bracone into the forecourt. The shot clock is off. She had nine first half points, none here in this third quarter until maybe that, nope, she couldn't get it to fall. And that's how things are gonna end. It's a comfortable Louisville lead through. Jess Lemley McDaniel on hand for this one. And as the fourth quarter gets going and A&T is trying to break a lengthy scoring drought. 27 turnovers now for the Aggies. The defense has been good. Jeff Wall's talking a lot about cutting, spacing, things that he harps on offensively. He's considered one of the best offensive coaches in the country for a reason. Oh yeah, he definitely is. And you hear him yelling over there, quick ball reversal. That's something they really did well in the first half. Kind of haven't seen it this second half as much, sharing the basketball. So he just wants the, them to continue to do that. Miss there from Acax and Louisville back into the front court. This is Taylor. And you do, you have to give some credit to this NCANT team, they, even if it's a 39 point game, they are continuing to fight, continuing to try to play hard. We have a player down right now. There's a heavy collision there. And, and it seems like there's been a lot of collisions this entire game, but that goes with to show how hard both of these teams are still playing. It is Willis who took the brunt of that collision. It, was two, it looked like two cutters ran into each other and took their defenders down with them. <laughs> mm, that's a heavy yeah, collision just... there just ran into the screen. Yeah, Marissa Russell had her feet set. 
those are some of the hardest hits when you don't know the screen is coming and you're just blindsided by it. I got in a fight with my starting center when I was in high school because he didn't call out a screen. Literally, a, like a, a fight in basketball court. Oh my court. goodness. Basketball practice, I should say. Point guard versus center, not a fair matchup either. <laughs> Uh, time out here for Louisville to try to get things straightened out. 9.03 here in the fourth quarter. And we will take a break here from Louisville. Cards in front. Back at the KFC Yum Center here in Louisville, Kentucky. Long standing Cardinals have been dominant from the get go here against the North Carolina A and T Aggies. Rebound to A and T as they push forward. They've played a tough non-conference schedule so far, North Carolina A and T. A little collision there between Love and I missed it on the other end, Acox, I believe it was. And the refs are telling the teams to go to their benches. Yeah, this has been a pretty physical second half here as we've had a couple of different reviews and conversations. A couple of technical fouls. Yeah, she uh, definitely grabbed Love's hand there, had those arms twisted up, a little bit better angle here. Yeah, I don't, I don't know about that one. That I think she could have, sometimes as a player, you just get your arms tangled up, but that Common foul, Louisville ball. So the foul was all they called. Uh, so we will continue play. No change other than Layla Acox now has four fouls. 
Yeah, the, or excuse me, three fouls. The only thing it. I can think of is that the ref saw her falling, so maybe she grabbed her to try to catch her fall. Um, I think she grabbed her before, but like we talked about earlier, we you just never know what they're gonna what they're gonna call and decide. I'm just glad I don't have to do it myself. Exactly. That's why we're over here and not refereeing <laughs> on the floor. <laughs> Love at the drive. And the offensive foul called as Acox drew the charge on the other end. Yeah, nice take by Lily Love, but way to slide, way NCA and slide your feet, get over there. Perfect timing on that from Acox. Here's Bracone bringing it up for the Aggies. Dorsey steps into a jumper. Taylor on the drive, a little floater. Second half has not been a great shooting performance from either team. The cards are five of 22. North Carolina a and is three of nine in the second half with a combined 18 turnovers. So this is not a beautiful mosaic for us to enjoy after what was a, for at least for Louisville fans, a very enjoyable first half experience performance on both ends of the floor. Yeah, and what I've seen on the offensive end for Louisville and of course we've heard Jeff Wall saying over there is that they're not reversing the ball as well as they did in the first half. In the first half, they had five, six passes before the shot. In this one you see drive, dribble, pull up. So it's more trying to get their own points this half rather than trying to get somebody else the open shot. Foul called underneath will send Paris Locke to the line. Two fouls on Marissa Russell. As Shania Clark checks back in for the Aggies. Locke has two points, two boards today so far. And freshman from Baltimore, Maryland. One, two. McDonough, which is a, an exceptional school out that way. First points in more than six minutes of game clock for North Carolina A&T. As Von Schenk is whistled for the travel there on the near side. Coach Walls yelling at her to shoot the ball. You see that 15 turnovers for the cards. They like to stay under 12 each game, so three over right now. But like we've said, it has been a very sloppy second half. It's not going to be a fun practice, I would imagine, knowing the turnover numbers. No, and now that they have a week <laughs> to prepare for their arrival against Kentucky next Sunday, which is a huge game, no matter what the records are between either team. The assist there for Russell. And Jada Curry almost shocked that she got the ball back, but she gets the jumper. She's got eight points to go with four assists. Excuse me, five assists, four rebounds today. She's been great. Flipped up and in there from Dorsey, her first field goal of the afternoon. She's got four. Nice backdoor cut from Dorsey. The help defense was just late get in there, and Dorsey was able to get it high off that glass and knock it down. Curry for three. And she was fouled on the follow through there by Dorsey. She's going to get three free throws out of this. And Curry's taking a beat down this fourth quarter. 
has had some hard falls. Good kick out by Mobley and Ooh. yeah, Dorsey just steps into her after the fact. But hey, she gets three free throws out of it. It's been a good game from Curry today. And Louisville has just been such a good team at drawing fouls. 20.5, excuse me, 26 attempts per game. And they're shooting as a team 79%. That number will go up after today. I spoke too soon as the free throw misses there. They're right around 80 for the day. That's a big difference maker though, Jess, in a game that's built around efficiency on the offensive end. Low turnover percentage, high free throws, those help. No, it definitely is, and especially in a close game where if you're up and the other team's fouling you at the end to be able to knock down those free throws, could win or lose you the game. Five on the shot clock. Jumper's no good, rebound collected underneath by Mobley. Mobley's getting some nice run here today, north of 15 minutes now as Russell fires. And that's one of those one pass, shooting the ball that Jeff Walls is not looking for. Louisville seven of 13 from three in the first half, 0 for eight now in the second half. Down to the five minute mark here. The Yum Center, as the holiday season is in full swing now. A lot of combo cards slash Christmas gear around. Ron Shake with the drive, missed it, rebound Love. Mobley turns in the post and flips it in. A nice move by Mobley. So far this year, Alexia Mobley has set career highs through now just nine games. She had a career high 12 against Bellarmine, 12 points. And she has broken her career high in rebounds that she set against Cincinnati. She had six against the Bearcats, has seven today as Love gets the bucket. She's got 10 points and nine rebounds. There's Bracone all the way to the rim. That was her first bucket since the first quarter. Yeah, nice take by Bracone. Like you said, she hit that first open three 61% of her shots have been from threes, but right now Louisville's ahead 77-36 with three minutes and 40 seconds to go. Geico makes car insurance easy. Say when. Well. Doing it quite well. And today is more evidence of that. 12 points, five rebounds, five assists, six steals for Curry transferred in from Cal. A plus 28 performance for her. Uh, she has been everywhere for the cards. Coming yeah. off the bench here and just looking so confident in this win. She has been excellent. And I'm most impressed because as a player, you come in, you start the first few games, and then you get taken out of the starting lineup. And sometimes players react to that. And she has not been one. She has been reacting in a positive way, not a negative way. Some people could pout, be like, I should be in the starting lineup. But she's really taken on this sixth player role. And that's impressive to me as a player to be that mature, to be able to say, OK, I can come off the bench and still make an impact in the game. It's been kids' day here at the Yum Center. We showed you the baby race at halftime. Baby Shark was just pulsating <laughs> through the arena. Quite frankly, it had everybody bopping to it, whether they want to admit it or not. And that's a 
charge drawn there by Sydney Taylor. That's four on Clark. And Louisville just sliding, sliding their feet. Like I said, we've had a few charges today and getting in position to take them. working through its press break here. Yeah, that's something we haven't seen a lot of NCA and T. Trying to put some pressure on for the last three minutes of the game. Ron Scheich for three, missed it. And another rebound off the offensive glass for Louisville. They have equal offensive and defensive rebounds at 21. Four on the shot, Russell. Good defense there from A and T. And they are at point eight on the shot clock here. And I'm sure we won't see it in a game like this, but Jeff Walls is really, really good with a low shot clock. And there you go. <laughs> right on cue. Marissa Russell for three. I was gonna say he's really good at drawing up plays, but I guess the players already knew what he was gonna call and just stepped right into it. It's the first three of the second half for Louisville. Clark flips that up and in. Yeah, and some miscommunication on Louisville's defense right there. Credit to NCA and T to be able to read that and And you know, fourth quarter, a minute 30 to go, NCA and T could pretty much roll over and say, okay, I'm done playing. But they are continuing to play defense. They're continuing to try to make it hard for this cards team. So you do have to give them credit for continuing to play even though the score has been out of range for quite a while now. I don't know if the Arena DJ consulted my wife beforehand, but they are playing all of my middle school <laughs> jams here. We got in sync going. You had the Spice Girls. This is these are throw. You were a child when those songs yeah, came out. They go from Baby Shark to in <laughs> sync. DJ's keeping me young. Nice ball movement there. Missed layup, but another offensive rebound for Louisville. Yeah, I really like the offensive rebound hustle plays that we've seen here tonight. They will reflect well in the video after this game. Offensive foul there drawn by Acox. A little full court pressure. One minute left in the game. One minute. It'll be a week between this one and the big rivalry game. Louisville and Kentucky doing battle. Back here at the Yum Center next Sunday, 2 p.m. Yeah, and that's something that is really going to have to be hyped up by the previous players and the coaches to know what that game means for the city of Louisville. Um, Olivia Cochran, Nyla Harris, Mobley, of course, have played against Kentucky, but everybody else, the newbies, I'm sure they will be told by the previous returning players of what this game really means. I would hope so, at least. <laughs> I don't want to lead you into a dangerous area, but what does that look like when you're trying to educate a teammate who's not from here? Do you show them hate videos? Do you show them... <laughs> 
mean comments that UK fans have said about Louisville? How do you get how do you get transfers invested into a rivalry, into a rivalry? game? No, definitely. You just show them games from the past, and the intensity of this week's practice just goes up an, an extra notch to prepare for that game. Because it is like a championship game. I mean, a rivalry game, Louisville's, I think, won the last five, if I'm not mistaken. Don't I, <laughs> I'll leave that one to you. I do not. Wrong, I, I don't have the serious history at hand. I know I should have fact checked myself before <laughs> saying that, but I'm pretty sure. <laughs> so it definitely means something, and Kentucky's going to come out swinging as well, looking for a big win against a top 25 team. It's always a fun one as Louisville is going to close this one out. As the clock runs out, the final score: Louisville doubling up. North Carolina a &T, the final score, 80-40. Your parting thoughts before Rivalry Week. No, first, first half, Louisville, excellent. Moving the basketball.